Hey, it's Chris. We're diving into a hot topic today, artificial intelligence or AI. This is a rapidly evolving space with lots of big players from Google and Meta to Amazon to Microsoft slash OpenAI and ChatGPT. And the question I wanna to explore today is can Apple compete in this new age of AI? Specifically, what we're gonna cover in today's video is the current state of Apple's AI efforts. We're gonna talk about Apple versus the competition, and then we're gonna give the case for and against Apple's AI dominance. First off, let's talk about where Apple currently stands in the AI race. Now, you might remember that Apple brought Siri to market. They acquired it way back in 2011, and they were one of the first to really embed a voice-based digital assistant within their products. So they were kind of ahead of the pack back then. But since then, Siri development has sort of stagnated and there's been a lot of criticism that Apple hasn't kept Siri up to date. It hasn't been keeping pace with developments in the AI space. Now, when somebody thinks about AI and Apple, they do think about Siri right off the bat, but it's not all about Siri. Since 2017, Apple has been investing heavily in their neural engine technology, which is a set of specialized computational cores that live on Apple chips and execute AI functions very quickly and efficiently. And not only that, but it lives on the device. This doesn't get sent off to the cloud to get processed. So it very much is in line with Apple wanting to keep things on the device. We're gonna talk about privacy and how that might affect things a little bit later. But since 2017, Apple has been continuously upgrading this neural engine experience. Now there have been some reports in recent months of areas where Apple is focusing some time and attention and money on AI developments outside of Siri, outside of the neural engine. One example would be the so-called Quartz or codenamed Quartz project, which is an AI health assistant that could be debuting at WWDC, where I'll be live and in person, so follow along on my social accounts uh, to go there with me. And another area would be facelit technology, which is a way that Apple's using AI to better light people's faces for FaceTime calls. Now, as you're hearing me talk about Apple's AI efforts that we know about at the moment, in the back of your head, you're probably thinking about, well, what about ChatGPT? What about things like MidJourney? What about things like Runway ML? There's a lot of generative AI happening out in the world. Google and Microsoft are all over generative AI. Where's Apple? So let's talk about Apple and the AI competition right now. Many of you know this, but Microsoft made a big investment in OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT. ChatGPT just released an iPhone app uh, just the other day, and it's very popular. Many people are comparing ChatGPT's new plugin store to Apple's App Store, and they're saying that Apple is missing an opportunity to replicate the success that they've had in the App Store, and that ChatGPT with their plugin store is going to eat Apple's lunch in the future, and Microsoft is gonna greatly benefit from that. I've already seen a lot of people using shortcuts to get around using Siri on their iPhone and having that instead interface with ChatGPT, and they're just bypassing Siri. And that says a lot about the state of AI and Siri at the moment. Now, Google, on the other hand, is very interested, making a lot of investment in AI, in machine learning, and in integrating it seamlessly with their hardware and software. So from a consumer perspective, for people who buy phones and tablets and laptops, let's say, they look at Google and they see that Google's AI technologies will learn users' preferences, it'll adopt to their lifestyle, and offer more personalized and predictive user experience. And they think, yeah, Google seems to have an edge in the AI race, a major edge over Apple and their hardware. When people interact with Siri at the moment, Siri often provides frustrating answers or canned responses, and it just feels prehistoric compared to AI advances that we're seeing from companies like Microsoft, ChatGPT, Google, even Meta, as much as I hate saying those words. Siri's really lacking in the context awareness department. And we could see this all change overnight at WWDC. I don't know that we're gonna see that, but it's possible. But first, let's explore the case against Apple's dominance moving forward that AI competitors 
are bringing. It's been reported and whenever something's reported, you don't know the actual accuracy and state of things internally at Apple, but it's been reported that there's been some internal struggle and strife and even dysfunction within Apple's internal AI teams. Some former employees have said there's been some chaos and some problems with decision-making within those AI teams and, and that's kind of hindered Apple's development in the AI space. One article that I came across while I was researching this said that the team developing Apple's new AR VR headset was disappointed by what the Siri team brought over in terms of how to control the headset using Siri. And they were even considering developing their own voice controls to control things on the headset because the state of Siri was just so lagging compared to what they were wanting to do. On top of that, Apple has lost some key AI figures and employees uh, that have moved to other companies, companies like Google, and that could be hindering Apple's AI efforts at the moment as well. There's also been some reports that say Siri's code base has been a challenge for Apple, kind of limiting. Sounds like it's become very complex, difficult to modify, which can hamper the team's ability to introduce new features and really improve Siri's capabilities. So there is some skepticism floating around out there, especially as WWDC approaches, where people are wondering, Will Apple be able to compete in the AI space moving forward? This is something I've been thinking really deeply about lately. In fact, I put up a Twitter thread on how I'm dealing with AI at the moment over on my new personal Twitter account. So I'll link that up if you wanna check it out. And actually the first free update that's gonna be coming to my productivity course, Learning to Be Productive, is going to focus on how to make use of AI in a productive way. How does it change the productivity landscape and being efficient? It's not as straightforward as you would think. So this is a good time to snag the productivity course and get those free updates while we still have that inflation relief pricing available because that's temporary. But let's turn our attention to the potential case for Apple's dominance in the AI space. You know, if you followed Apple for any period of years that they're not always first to market. And sometimes when they come to market, they make big waves, not first, but best. And it's certainly possible that that could be the case with AI moving forward. There was an article out recently where Tim Cook was talking about the huge opportunities that the company sees with AI. But you also get the sense that Apple's waiting a bit. They're stepping back, kind of assessing, seeing how things develop for other companies, how the market's gonna shape up before they dive in. There doesn't seem to be a huge sense of urgency to make a big splash right now with AI at least with generative AI. Now we talked about Apple's neural engine a little bit earlier in the video, and I wanna bring that up again here because the ability for Apple to process AI efficiently on device is a pretty big deal. There's a reason why over the years, Google has wanted to replicate Apple's integration of the hardware and software and not just have software that ran on other people's hardware like the early days of Android. The efficiencies that Apple could deliver with its neural engine on device without having to connect to the internet could be huge and could also have really big privacy implications. Privacy is a huge topic of concern these days. And if Apple can deliver a more private generative AI experience for people that works across their ecosystem, that could be a huge win. Think about it, ChatGPT is super useful, but what does ChatGPT and Microsoft and OpenAI know about you? Obviously, companies like Google have exploited that sort of knowledge over users for marketing purposes in the past, and there are concerns over manipulation when it comes to things like elections and your freedom of choice right? And the data that's presented to you. So if Apple could come in and kneecap all of those companies who are exploiting your data and just make money off of selling you their expensive hardware and their services, you could definitely see some sort of Siri subscription, right? For a generative AI in Apple's offering. That's just how Apple operates these days. Well, yeah, there's an opportunity there. Another huge opportunity for Apple in the AI space would be to seamlessly integrate AI across the Apple ecosystem in their hardware and software. They got that tight integration. Everybody else, their competitors, have to convince people to install an app on their Apple device. But Apple can come along and roll out an update and Apple's AI solution would just be everywhere on all Apple devices. So if Apple could come out and offer a unified, holistic, personalized experience across their ecosystem, that would be a unique 
key advantage. And you can also step back and kind of look at things from different angles. And you realize the reason why Apple's probably not in a super rush here to throw out something that competes with ChatGPT, for instance, is that apps have always made Apple devices great, right? It's pointless to have all of this hardware if you don't have the apps that can make use of it. Well, developers like Adobe with Photoshop are coming out with generative fill functions. And what used to be just plain old Photoshop is now Photoshop with AI enhancements and AI capabilities. And we're probably gonna see that same thing play out across all the different apps that you've used for years. They're going to get AI enhancements. Apple might just be pretty content to just sit back and let those app developers upgrade their user's experience and bake AI into the apps that they're already using and loving and relying on. And as long as people continue to buy Apple's hardware and their services, Apple's going to massively benefit from the AI wave that's crashing upon society right now, whether they do anything with Siri or not. If you wanna speculate about the very distant future, I think something that people would be really interested in with Apple and AI would be an Apple AI powered humanoid robot. You already have people like Brett Adcock, whose company Figure is working on humanoid robots that are very impressive looking, that can do chores for you around the house. And also Tesla is working on an AI bot as well. And the idea from that section of the tech industry is that people will own these or lease these robots, kind of like you do a car, and that will just be a part of your everyday life. Well, would you rather have that or would you rather have an Apple bot that has a focus on privacy? There are interesting times ahead for sure. And if you wanna keep up to date on all of them, you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe to our newsletter. It's linked up down below, it comes out every Friday, very high open rate. People love that thing. And there's a reason. It tells you about the latest apps, services, and accessories that Apple users will want to know about without having to do any work themselves. Just arrives in the inbox. Check it out, check out the course. You don't wanna miss that pricing and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.